Hi, my name is Joe Darcy. I've worked on the JDK uh, for many years, and I'm very happy that today, after five years in the making, 147 builds and four major JSRs, JDK 7 is shipping, almost. Uh, as we've heard, it's set to GA uh, later this week. All the JSRs have been passed, and the RC bits are currently available for download. How many people have downloaded JDK 7 already? I see a few hands in the audience. Hope you're having good experiences with it. Uh, it will be going GA first on um, Windows and Linux, and then sometime in the future, it'll uh, be available for Mac. So back at Sun, we'd like to take a long-term approach to the evolution of the Java platform. When we were first planning JDK 7, we didn't realize quite how long-term an approach we were going to be taking. So uh, as mentioned, while JDK 7 doesn't have the revolutionary changes of a release like JDK 5, there are still many useful evolutionary features in JDK 7 available for use today. So uh, after the Oracle acquisition, there was a replanning of JDK 7. And at Java 1 last year, the plan was announced, the so-called Plan B option. Under that plan, a number of the features in JDK 7 that are already ready were going to be shipped about now, uh, mid-2011. And some of the larger features, like closures and modulation, were deferred until JDK 8, and work's already started on those. The JDK 7 features, uh, the major ones are the Invoke Dynamic Instruction, which I'll talk a bit more about later, uh, new I.O. APIs, or more new I.O. APIs, and uh, Project Coin, small language changes. There are lots of other features as well, and you can read about those in the release notes. So we heard from Stephen Harris this morning about Oracle's commitment to Java and uh, JDK. So how has that been translated into practice? Here's a graph of the change sets uh, pushed to the uh, JDK 7 Mercurial Forest over time. We can see what's happened under Sun and then under Oracle. And the blue line at the bottom is change sets per month. So for the year before uh, the acquisition, the last year of Sun, we can see that the rate of change in the JDK 7 repositories was going down. Then, after a little break for the uh, Welcome to Oracle activities, uh, under Oracle we got work on JDK 7 again, and the rate of activity increased. It increased to greater than the Sun rate. So for these two one-year periods under Oracle, there are on av average 15% more change sets per month. Uh, more recently, there, there was a big push to uh, finish up the JDK 7 features in the spring, in April and May, and then uh, uh, most recently, the last few months, of course, we've been stabilizing the release, so not much has been changing. So Invoke Dynamic. Invoke Dynamic is the first new uh, bytecode instruction added to the uh, JVM since the beginning. Calling method is, in some ways, the most fundamental JVM operation. It's also the basis of many op optimizations, such as inlining. And there are a handful of instructions already that allow you to do different sorts of method calls. So there's invoke virtual for regular methods and invoke interface for interface methods and so on. And it's uh, also the linking process which is tied into a method execution. Because after all, you have to know which method you're going to call. And linking, uh, by linking, the virtual machine finds the method and then adds it to the data structures. And the semantics of linking are deeply tied to the semantics of the Java programming language and the Java VM. So if you're writing another uh, language runtime to run on the JVM, such as JRuby or Jython, and those languages have different semantics, there's an impedance mismatch between the semantics of Java and the semantics of the other language. And bridging that impedance mismatch can be very expensive and roundabout. And with Invoke Dynamic, you don't have to do that anymore. It greatly eases it. Uh, the way it does this is by exposing the linkage to the language runtime. So it's programmatic. The uh, language runtimes can use their own linkage rules. Uh, this is done through uh, new uh, data structures call sites and method handles, which are a VM level function pointer. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested in this, uh, there were many talks about this last week at the JVM Language Summit, and I believe there's al also be some talks about JRuby and other uh, runtimes here later this week at the conference. So just to say a little bit about uh, the more new I.O. facilities. Uh, in the NIO facilities, there's uh, good support added for file systems uh, and files in the JDK. So this is a replacement and improvement on the old Java I.O. file. So there are methods to copy, move, delete files, as well as to handle directories in a simple fashion. And there's uh, helpful convenience methods to deal with the contents of a file, such as copying it and moving it around. Which brings us to Project Coin. 
So Project Coin uh, reduces extra text in programs to make them more readable, and also has structures that encourage programming idioms to make programs more reliable. And we've taken care to integrate both with past language changes as well as with anticipated future language changes such as Project Lambda coming up in JDK 8. We have IDE support for uh, Project Coin today. There's beta support in Eclipse, and IntelliJ 10.5 also supports Project Coin. Both Eclipse and IntelliJ participated in the JSR 334 expert group, and we're very happy they were able to do so. The, J the Java C team has been working with NetBeans for several years to provide support for uh, Project Coin features along the way, and now we I'll be doing a quick demo of those features in NetBeans. <clears throat> so, the first feature for Project Coin is uh, strings and switch. Before JDK 7, you can only switch on an integer value or an enum. So, if you wanted to write code like this that, say, uh, computes the number of days in a month based on the name, you'd have to, say, have repeated calls to a equals method on a string like this. But really what you're doing is uh, switching on the string value. And now in JDK 7, you can do that. So the IDE recognizes this coding pattern for you, and then you can convert it as well. So this means exactly what you think it means. It's very simple to use, a little bit more interesting to implement, uh, but very easy to use. Next up is the diamond operator, or the diamond syntax. So uh, we have our generic methods, say a map, in this case a map from integers to lists of strings. So when you declare your map variable, you have to say what sort of map it is. Then when you go to initialize a variable, uh, say with a hash map constructor, you have to repeat those type arguments again on the right hand side. That is a hash map from integers to lists of strings. Now repeating the type arguments in the constructor doesn't really add anything. It's just visual clutter. And now you can uh, get rid of it. So again, the IDE can uh, recognize the situation for you and get rid of the code. So now, the, now it fits within the uh, normal line boundaries. Now what, what's going on here isn't just textual substitution. Uh, actually some bit of type inference is going on, meaning the uh, compiler is uh, doing computation for you. So if we take a case here, uh, we can Autocomplete first to array list, so we can autocomplete the diamond, choose the constructor. And then we can see that some, the compiler's inferring something for us. So while the variable is declared to be a list of question mark, uh, if we control hover over array list, we can see what the compiler has inferred is not a array list of question mark, but rather an array list of object. And I'll be talking more about the sort of inference algorithms used for diamond at a talk I'm giving uh, later this morning about the state of JDK and OpenJDK. Finally, I can do a quick demo of uh, multi-catch. So uh, this code uses uh, checked exceptions, and it has to have repeated try blocks to catch them, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. But now you don't have to have that anymore either. You can collapse the try blocks into a single one and you can separate the exceptions you're catching with uh, uh, vertical bars like so. Now I'll go back to the slides. Uh, so there are some other uh, coin features as well. My colleague Stuart Marks will be talking about the experiences we had uh, with try with adding the try with resources feature and other features to the JDK libraries uh, tomorrow. Uh, just quickly, there are other library changes. Uh, I want to mention this one, Java Utah Objects. How many people have written a two-argument uh, static equals method that handles nulls? I've certainly written many of them. Now you don't have to. That's in the platform now, so I recommend you look at that. Uh, there are many tracks here at OSCON Java. I'd also say there's a virtual track about uh, changes in the JDK. As I mentioned today, I have another talk about uh, the state of JDK and open JDK. There's what prom promises to be a vigorous discussion this afternoon about uh, Java standards processes, and there's more talks coming about uh, the JDK tomorrow as well. And with that, I hope to see you at the other JDK talks at OSCON. Thank you.